Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's Baldi's Basics in Education and Learning video, we take a look at the mysteries of here school, the characters who inhabit it, and why exactly Baldi's questions seem to make no sense at all. And what about that bizarre field trip that recently released? All of these questions will be covered in today's theory, which expands and elaborates on my original Baldi theory in which I proposed the main character may have some kind of mental disorder such as schizophrenia, hence why they see the world in such a tainted light. The more I thought about this theory, the more I became aware that the entire school may not be a normal high school and instead a school for special education. And this principle will be the groundwork for today's theory. So what exactly is a special education high school? Well, let's take a look at the Wikipedia definition for such an institute. Special education, also known as special needs education, aided education, exceptional education, or special ed, is the practice of educating students in a way that addresses their individual differences and needs. Ideally, this process involves the individually planned and systematically monitored arrangement of teaching procedures, adapted equipment and materials, and accessible settings. These interventions are designed to help individuals individuals with special needs achieve a higher level of personal self-sufficiency and success in school and in their community, which may not be available if the student were only given access to a typical classroom education. This basic description perfectly fits with everything we see in Baldi's Basics. The layout of the school itself seems designed to help those with special needs. The classrooms are simple and the building has lots of bright colours, something we don't see in a regular high school for the most part. Look at the drawings on the wall here too, they resemble something a child with learning difficulties would have drawn and suggest a very basic IQ. This particular image comes off as highly strange, even creepy, in its suggestion of self-harm. But these images and the look and feel of the school alone is not enough evidence for us to claim the setting of the game is indeed that of a special ed school. So let's dive a little deeper. First, let us turn our attention to the two teachers, Baldy and Principal of a Thing. Here is an audio extract from both of them. I can't believe it. You're incredible. Your parents will hear about this one. As you can tell from these audio clips, the speech patterns from both these teachers is slow and deliberate. The way they talk is not the way you would expect a teacher to communicate with a regular student, but it does sound similar to what we may expect to hear from a teacher speaking to someone with a learning disability. Slow and simple so they can be understood, and calm in tone so they do not scare the child. Also, we hear Baldy congratulate our character every time they get a single question correct. This over-the-top praise is something that would absolutely be said to a kid with severe learning disabilities, as they have a far harder time wrapping their heads around even the most simplistic of questions much of the time. You will also notice that Baldi rewards the player with a shiny quarter for getting the first question of the day correct. You did great! Come here and get your prize! A shiny quarter! Again, something not commonplace in a normal school environment, but would be found in special education. But there is more evidence than I have presented so far in this video, much more in fact, and the second half of this video looks at the other students and the mystery field trip, both holding further clues which cement this theory as something to seriously consider. So let's start with a look at the other students at here school. First up is Playtime, a schoolgirl wearing a red dress who desperately seeks someone to play skipping rope with. Her description also states she has poor eyesight, so this is a child who has a physical learning disability, her poor vision, and seems socially unaware, forcing herself on the player and demanding to play with them, only stopping if her skipping rope is cut in half. <laughs> So we certainly have a character in Playtime who exhibits qualities in line with special needs. 
Next, we move to Arts and Crafts, strangely displayed as a sock in the game, which we assume represents a creation made by him in, well, Arts and Crafts. This student is known to be very shy and reclusive. It is also stated that they become jealous of people with more notebooks than them. This is a strange motive to bring out jealousy and anger in a child, but would make sense if Arts and Crafts has a learning disability, and so therefore is easily triggered by menial things. His description also states that he doesn't like being looked at, and we can see this in the game. This character, if seen, ducks back out of view. However, they will try to get the player in trouble if all seven notebooks are collected. So again, another character with personality traits which would match a mentally challenged individual. Moving on to first prize, we see a physical disability more than a mental one, a character that represents someone in a wheelchair, and with a big heart, which represents, as his description remarks, someone who loves hugging people and rushing towards anyone it sees. So here we have a kid with a physical handicap, but someone who seems to be fairly intelligent and may be overly friendly towards people. I am coming ready or here I come. And once again, we have evidence this is a child who would require a special school environment, both to get around in and also to learn to control their overt emotions. As far as the final student, It's a Bully, is concerned, we don't have a description that alludes too much to someone who is mentally or physically challenged. He is simply stated to be a bully, but his appearance does seem to mirror that of someone with a certain type of disability. His nose is large and squashed up, he has an overly happy expression on his face at all times, and tiny eyes while his body is very large and his arms very small, in comparison to teachers such as Baldy and Principal of a Thing, as well as the mysterious file name too, they all have a more normal look with less exaggerated features. So, there is some evidence here to suggest the bully is also disabled in some way. With all this information in mind, we can now fully explain why Baldi's questions often make no sense at all. While the simpler questions are manageable for this student, they may be suffering from a form of dyslexia. This is a learning disability which is very common in many people, and usually isn't a big deal. However, some people suffer severe dyslexia, and this can make understanding numbers and words very difficult. So in-game, I believe this is represented by literally showing harder math questions as something totally unreadable. And so these questions aren't actually presented to the child this way by Baldy, rather it is simply their anxiety and dyslexia kicking in as they begin to fail to keep up. It is the game representing their learning disability. It also seems like each notebook the player collects represents a class the child is attending, with each class bringing them closer to the end of the school day when they can finally return home. But because of this, their anxiety rises and so they perceive Baldy to become more of a danger to them, feeling pressured upon getting more and more answers incorrect, and in turn, feeling as if their teacher is becoming angrier with them. This is only heightened by the presence of other students and their actions toward the player. At the end of a school day, the child feels highly distressed, and so we can hear this audio clip. Congratulations! You found all seven notebooks! Now all you need to do is... Now all you still can! In reality, no one is out to harm them, and it's all in their head. It also appears as if this is the kid's first day at here school, as Baldy greets them in this manner at the beginning of the game. Oh, hi. Welcome to my schoolhouse. It seems obvious now the school and its students are special needs focused, and this explains why they behave the way they do, and their skewed and abstract presentation in the game. It explains why Baldy speaks the way he does, and why many of his questions appear nonsensical to the player. It even explains the bizarre art found on the walls around the school, and why objects such as these scissors are so blunt and safe. 
but we have one more scenario to analyse in order to complete today's theory, and that is the mysterious field trip minigame that recently released for the game. Because special needs centres and schools often use unorthodox methods of teaching in order to help students become both self-sufficient and gain confidence in themselves, it makes sense that Baldy as the child's mentor would perhaps spend time with them outside of the classroom to further develop these qualities. So it isn't that strange that he takes the child on a field trip under these circumstances. This is an exercise to help the child become self-sufficient, by building a fire and camping in the woods. Again, he is trying to help the kid and not harm them in any way, but this child feels that if they let the fire go out, they will get in trouble, when this is actually a harmless learning exercise. The bizarre cloudy copter is most likely just a regular flying helicopter overhead, but again, something which scares the child under these circumstances, being away from home and with a relative stranger in the woods at night, a place they would probably feel highly uncomfortable in. And with that, we have covered just about everything found within Baldi's basics, with a theory that explains all. But this is just a theory, and we will delve into other takes on the weirdness of the game in the coming weeks. In the meantime, let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. And that's it for today's video, please remember to give it a like if you did enjoy watching, and maybe drop a comment too, as well as subscribing to the channel, and turning on notifications so you never miss an upload. This channel specialises in variety horror content, including creepypasta readings, horror gaming facts and theories, and general interest pop culture horror videos. So, if you are interested in all things spooky, you'll find something to enjoy here at Super Horror Bro. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.